guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How are y'all doing? I'm doing fantastic in a really good mood today. Send some positive vibes your way today, especially if you need them. I say this all the time here on the channel, but I think it bears repeating because there's new viewers every time and people go through things in life, right? But if you're going through something right now, uh, I, I cannot, from, a, from an older gentleman, I cannot tell you guys enough the things that I worried about, stressed about, anxious about, uh, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I don't even remember remember now just know that you will get through whatever you're going through right now today we have a new tier list it's 2023 let's talk about the top 30 champions in Ray shadow legends now a lot of you guys loved when i put out a video kind of i'm not gonna say critiquing hell hades tier list but basically using somebody else's tier list as a blueprint or a barometer and then giving my opinions after that as to who they snubbed and who i would include uh, or who i would who i would include those champions that were snubbed over there there we go if i can speak anyway you're smart you understand my other viewers and yeah, but you, you, you get what I'm saying, right? I want to show you really quickly the champions in order. We're going to start with number one. We're not going to mess around today's video, right? By the way, the, the new fusion that they're just are going to be adding a fragment summon. They're going to be adding, uh, you know, like now, by the time you're watching this, probably. I think that it, it, she would fall in the top 30 overall champions, uh, but uh, not in the game right now, the time of this recording. Anyway, number one champion in the game, according to Raid Shadow Pro .gg, Raid Shadow Pro .gg slash tier list. I'm going to include that in the description below if you want to we'll go ahead and check it out as I go through these champions but the number one champion in the game is Duchess I don't think she's number one champion in the game but I do think she's a top like five champion in the game so I'm not going to be too critical here we all know Duchess increased attack block debuffs one of the best revivers in the game one of the best damage mitigators in the game just one of the best champions overall in the game uh no doubt about it it really no problems with the top like 10 champions however you could argue a little bit about the order number two chris the ageless he's got the aoe decreased speed he's got the aoe increased buff duration the aoe ally protect the aoe damage the aoe provoke the aoe uh, speed ah, he's got decreased defense he's got decreased attack he's got a uh, a shield at the beginning of each round he's got it all man the big turtle. He likes me. I have him as number two, but I don't have Duchess as number one. So uh, we're right on track here, guys. Number three. Ooh. I hate even talking about her, man, because as you can see, yours truly does not have his hands on Acrisia. Acrisia is ranked as the number three champion in the game. Hard to argue that with an enemy max HP skill on every move. That's it. Enemy, max, HP, everywhere. The best AoE attacker for PvE content in the game. Really not even close, bar none. Uh, I guess unless you were going to compare her to wave killers. Let me, let me rephrase. The best damage dealer for bosses in the game, right? Bye-bye, Ninja. Hello, Acrisia. Are you okay? No. Thank you for asking. Number three, no arguments there. Number four, they're going to have Lydia. Again, no surprise here. Olivia has one of the strongest moves in the game. Decreased defense, weakened strength, and increased speed. All the strong versions on one ability with the denial of revivals. Uh, she's amazing. She's amazing. That's number four. They have ranked number five champion in the game is none other than Siffy, the Lost Bride, right? So Siffy, uh, no arguments there. She has one of the strongest single target revivals with the full turn meter. She's got an amazing ability that's giving you so much of what you need with turn meter fill on top of the increased defense, increased speed, etc. She's got a great heal here on her passive. She just has, this is how support champions should be made, ladies and gentlemen. All right, champion number six, they're giving it to cardio they're giving it to cardio i don't think i have him number six but I, I probably have him close to that you know so i can't disagree just an amazing ally attack champion with an a3 he's got this um, just incredible angel song i can't say amazing as adjective on every single skill can i and we're not gonna mess around today's video right <laughs> cleanse block debuffs revive on death for two turns on a three turn cooldown can't be removed yeah, dude. It's one of those things, like, you, every time you look at this champion, just like so, all these champions we're going to talk about today, dude, they're all, they, they remind you how good. Like, yeah, dude, that's nasty. That's nasty. I mean, okay. Very good for number, that was number six. Number seven is going to be 
Yameko. Yameko. Uh, big fan of Yameko. Love this champion. I have no problem with her being at number seven here. And they grade all these champions on like a one to 11. And uh, everybody before Yameko, they had over a 10. Now we're going below a 10. I'm going to show you again the whole list uh, on the screen here in just a moment, right? We'll take a little intermission. So Yameko has the Dance of Time ability. A little Warlord, a little Kaimar. You mix them together, you get Dance of Time. Tremendous champion. A2 is great too. And uh, she's got perfect Veil vale to start of every turn she's just a very very good champion now you guys know and again some i think the majority of you guys kind of agree with me at least at least you can see my point when i say this uh but there's a couple of you in the comments every time i mention this and i mention it a lot uh you disagree you disagree you're not a fan of mithrala as the number one champion in the game i'm sorry I put her up there, right? I would put her top three, right? On my list, right? Three-way tie, maybe, between, I don't know, Chris and, and Mithrala and, you know, give it to whoever you want to. There's so many good champions. We could really make an argument that all of these could be number one, right? But I think Mithrala is amazing. They have her, again, at number eight. Uh, I just love her kit. She's super fast. Good accuracy in all battles aura. She's got the amazing passive where she's putting petrification. She's converting her uh, her accuracy to resistance. Insanely good for the arena. Insanely good for everywhere, man. That's just a broken passive. Let's start with the passive. And then we get the cleanse and the big version of strengthen and a shield and a three-turn cooldown. What? And then we have hex on an AoE. Increase attack and increase defense. All in one champion. Come on, man. She wins it. Void Affinity, obviously. She's the queen of versatility. She's the queen of everything. I love Mithrala. I'll say it again. I love Mithrala Lifebane. Now, at number 10, right? Let me say one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Excuse me. Number nine here, guys. They have Under Priest Brogni. I don't think I'd have him this high. I love Under Priest Brogni, just like I love all these champions. But I'm not sure he would be inside my top. I don't know. He is unique. He's got the Grow Shield, right? He's got the Grow Shield. He's got the Burn on the A1. And then he's got the Shield and the Block uh, Debuffs and the Increased Attack uh, and the very unique passive where he's reflecting some of that uh, Shield damage onto the attacker with the heal. It's hard to argue, right? It's hard to argue. It's only tricky when you look at champions behind Brogni, you know, like that you might like better or want a little bit more. Number 10, they're going to have Prince Kaimar. So again, a hard to argue this one, Prince Kaimar. You can use this dude absolutely everywhere in the game. If you're lucky enough to own him, you know what I'm talking about. Seal of Magic is incredible. Abyssal Gaze is money inside the arena. Remove buffs, put them to sleep, then nuke him to death. He's got the one of the better speed auras in the game for the arena as well. That's number 10, Prince Kaimar. No complaints there. Now, I was pretty surprised at this one. Number 11, they have have ranked Elva Autumnborn. I think it's a little bit too high for Elva Autumnborn. Don't get me wrong. Again, like all these champions, she's incredible. I just wouldn't have her this high. Continuous heal on the alley, lowest HP and AOE, uh, excuse me, a cleanse, block debuffs and increase speed. It's a good ability, no doubt about it on the three turn cooldown. But then this revival, well, it's on a three turn cooldown, but it is a single target revival. 50% turn meter, 40% HP, increased defense, increased attack. It's definitely not bad. And then she has the heal, similar to like a Siffy or a Soul of the Drakes on the passive as well. Hmm. I mean, it's a good kit, isn't it, guys? 19%. What do you think about her as the number 11 champion? Eh, she's really good. She looks really good, too. All right, let's move it along here. Let's move it along. We can argue about the, uh, the actual ranks later. We get number 12 is Theodore the Savant. Uh, he's the king of speed farming right now in AoE decrease speed. We got poisons, poison sensitivity, and increased speed on all allies on a three-turn cooldown. And then we have increased dura duration and instant activation of any and all uh, HP burns and poisons. That is a nasty, 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 nasty A3. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't put him this high personally, uh, but definitely one of the better speedrunners inside the entire game, right? And pretty good even outside side of speedrunning. I think I get the tendency of just saying where a champion is best, but that's a champion that really has a lot of utility of that AoE on the A1 as well, right? And increased speed. He's a very, very unique kit that has a lot in it, right? I'm kind of losing track a little bit, but I will stop. I have the mark at 30. Okay. So next up on the list is going to be uh, none other than uh, where are you, Mashal? There you are in front of my face. Mashal, 
Mashal, I think, is a little high for me. Uh, really like him, though. Very good for Hydra. He can kill everybody with the leech on the AoE, kind of, sort of, on the A1. And then this Tornado is right up there, one of the better abilities inside the game. The extra turn, the increased speed, the increased crit damage, the true fear, and the leech on everybody. And again, I repeat, the extra turn allows you to basically have this up all the time. Very, very, very good champion in Mashald. Next up is going to be Valkyrie. Of course, she's going to be on the list. Of course, she's going to be high on the list between the Jealousy passive, but obviously the counterattack, the big, 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 big shield. Valkyrie is incredible. I cannot argue this one at all. She's one of the OG champions. Unlike almost everybody we mentioned here, Kaimar, Duchess, and Mashal, but he got a big buff, so it's really Valkyrie. Really, only three of these champions so far are not expansion champions. Isn't that interesting? Next up, we have Ninja. They have Ninja ranked next. Uh, Ninja, people, some people get triggered when I talk about Ninja here. If you weren't playing when Ninja was released for free, kind of like an ultimate death knight thing. He's amazing. One of the best boss killers in the game with a hail burn ability. He has an AoE freeze as well in the Scion slash escalation. Gives him more damage on his passive as well. He's the increased def decreased defense, excuse me, on the A1 as well. Just what a great champion. Uh, next up is going to be one of my personal favorites. I've said it a million times. I was so high on this guy the day he came out. And it looks like the community is starting to come around. Because some people were like, dude, you're overhyping him. I'm like, nah, man. No. This guy is incredible. I still think he's underrated. And he's 16th on their list. And speed in all battles. Fills the champion's turn for 5% for each time a debuff on an enemy is removed, transferred, or expires. Okay. That's insane. He's like a, definitely a top three, five, three, five Hydra Clan boss uh, champion. Increased speed. And then an extra turn with the turn meter fill. Dude. Dude, what an ability. 30% turn meter spill with the increased speed, with the extra turn. And then he's got two AoEs. He's got AoE over here on his A1 with decreased attack. Then he's got an AoE with decreased speed and a leech. Whew, this guy is a monster, a beast. Just broken. All right, next up is going to be the Nutcracker, Jugerd the Breaker. The head always, it always weirds me out, man. What, yo, what up, man? Do it. <laughs> Say, okay, okay, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Dude, he's an amazing nuker, right? He's an amazing nuker. He's got the ignore target's defense on his passive, which makes him really, in for my money, the best arena nuker in the game. You can also pop somebody off with stone skin and gain an extra turn on the uh, deadly ballet on his A3, dude. That's it's just nasty, nasty, nasty. What a great champion. Next up, surprising here, surprising, I wouldn't have her in my top 30. I'm not a hater, because I know everybody has her. You're going to get offended. Offend how do you offend your entire audience? You make fun of Arbiter. That's how you do it. I love Arbiter. She's great. She's still the speed queen for the arena, right? Especially speed farming your great hall, which is what 99% of people do in the arena, right? She fell out of meta in top tier arena, because speed is not the thing right now with, with stone skin everywhere. Uh, but she's still one of the better revival and, you know, speed base champions in the game. You can even use her really anywhere outside of the arena as well. Good in Hydra in her own right. Good base stats. So, you know, it's, it's tough to argue. Uh, but she is next on the list. Uh, after that on the list, guys, I promise there, are, there is going to be a couple epics on the list too. I promise, guys. This is one that I'm really happy they included this high. And it's Nishak Vermin Lord, the last fusion dude. This guy is insane. I love this guy more every single day. I thought about making another video on him after my initial impressions video, but I don't have much more to say because I think my initial impressions on this dude were right, except for that I feel even more strongly about how good he is, right? He's just a damage dealing absolute maniac. Maniac. He's got AoE decrease speed. He's decreasing detonation, increasing detonation of poisons. He's placing bombs. Bombs deal extra damage. And then every time a bomb leaves, he's got a protected poison. It's in insane. It's insane, man. I'm so happy I went for this fusion. I wasn't going to because it was over the holiday, but I, I got lucky and I pulled a couple of the epics for the fusion. That's the best thing that can happen, huh, guys? You just get lucky and you pull some of the epics and you're like, oh, oh, thank you. I wish I could just, oh. Wish I could always pull the epic. That was a joke. All right, next up is going to be, they have my man, and I don't uh, disagree. Excuse me, where am I going? Demon Spawn Ash. With, I don't disagree with, I just forget the double negative. I don't disagree with Helicath either. Helicath is ranked, whatever, 21 on the list. 
He's got the Great Shield based on defense, similar to Valkyrie. He's got the uh, Devoted Servant, similar to Rashkar the Tower, except for way better because it's replacing block damage with increased defense. He's counterattacking. He's placing the strong version of, of, of uh, Weaken. This guy's just an absolute monster. The best unkillable slash, well, block damage, I guess, technically speaking, champion in the game, in my opinion, and I think the opinion of probably a lot of you guys. I mean, I've been playing for a long time. I've never seen anybody like Helicath. I cannot argue that one at all. Next up, guys, we get to the home stretch, kind of, sort of, here. We have Lady Kimmy. I... I'm a massive fan of Lady Kimmy. I do not, I, I, again, I agree wholeheartedly with this ranking. Uh, Doom Tower Speed, she's got the cool, really cool uh, passive. We're not gonna go over it right now in the interest of time, but we have the, the remove a buff, place block buffs, increase speed, increase accuracy on all allies, the AoE attack with decrease speed, decrease accuracy, decrease turn meter, and then more attacks and more turn meter depletion on the A1. That's a mouthful. She's one of the fastest champions in the entire game as well. Great base stats. Sometimes when you see a champion with like really high speed, it's not always the case, but I would say more often than not, especially with new release champions, if you see that speed over 109 or so, like it's an indicator of, wow, that might be like one of the top champions. It might be a game changer, you know? And again, it's just something I've noticed. It's looking at that speed, right? Next up, we have a nuker here, ladies and gentlemen. It is Leo Leorius the Proud. Uh, really cool looking champion, right? The Leo the Lion, there he goes. Uh, just an amazing arena nuker. He's got the Skull Crown ability with the unkillable on his passive, so he stays alive. You can use him on go first or go second teams. He can't be CC'd when his A2 is off cooldown. And then he has his hard hitting, awesome roar. Really, both of his a AoE attacks are very hard hitting. Uh, he has true fear in a weekend. Very, very, very exceptional champion. Next up, they have Rio Bone Spear. She is amazing. Uh, just an incredible. Incredible, incredible ability, this perfect body, guys, especially. Uh, the cleanse, the block debuffs, and a great heal on top of that. Just a really, really exceptional heal. 35% plus 5% for each debuff removed. Uh, incredible champion. Incredible champion. She has every debuff known to man on her A2 ability, albeit a single target. Just a, tr a fantastic champion. She actually hits, like, deceptively hard, too. Harder than you think she would. But with that base attack, it's not that bad. It scales pretty well for a support champion. All right, next up, guys, is going to be is gonna be number 24, and it's the first epic on our list, and this is where I disagree. I don't think that Deke I hate my life. Is the number one epic in the game, but I do think he's a beast, okay? Time compression, a great ability that grants an extra turn. You come into the AoE decreased defense. He's got a little leech on the A1. He's got a speed aura as well. Definitely one of the better epics in the game. I just wouldn't put him number one epic in the game. Next up is another epic, guys. Next up on the list is going to be Godseeker Aniri. I made a whole video talking about, I don't know why I left Sacred Order to come back to Sacred Order, don't ask me, but Godseeker Aniri, I made a whole video talking about why the case to be made to why she's the best epic in the game. Listen, I'm splitting hairs here because I really probably would pick another one over both of these, uh, but we'll talk about him in just a moment. This uh, 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 revival is so unique. The emergency revival is so unique, but resetting the skills is just tremendous. It has some great synergy with champions that are a little bit squishy, a little bit fragile, that have insane abilities. You can reset that ability just by reviving them and go into it again. It's, it's, it's great. It's insane. And then this quest for meaning is amazing as well. We get a heal. We get an AoE, you know, and then we get to increase the duration of buffs uh, on allies, decrease the detonation of buffs on enemies. Just a such, a, such a strong kit. You can use her anywhere. She's Amazing. All right, guys, 26. Champion 26 is going to be none other than Maneater, okay? Maneater, one of the OG kings of unkillable teams, has a really nice A2, really nice kit overall, really good A1 with decreased attack on everybody. People kind of overlook the rest of his kit, how good it is. Uh, number 27 is going to be Royal Guard, enemy max HP, old school OG champion in the game, another epic champion. And then number 28 is going to be Seer, another epic champion here. Seer, obviously, still the queen of speed runs with a karma burn, hard hitting ability. Number 29 is going to be none other than Necret the Great. Necret the Great, where are you? There you are, buddy. Uh, personally, one of my favorites. I probably have him top 20 on my list. Just an absolute game changer of a champion if you're ever lucky enough to pull this dude. If you're lucky enough to have him and you're watching this video right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just tremendous 
tremendously strong passives, ally protection all over the place, uh, great for the arena to protect your nuker on a go second team, uh, and then the ally protect as well. Just an amazing, amazing champion. And champion number 30 on their list, guys, is going to be one that I don't have. It is Snick Track. So they have Snick Track as number 30. Decrease attack on his A1. He's an AoE decrease speed uh, for two turns. Also plays the shield on all allies. The shield cannot be removed if there are any enemies under leech. Very, very strong ability here. Very strong ability. And then we have ally protection and reflect damage on an A3 on a three-turn cooldown. And then we have whenever an ally under reflect damage is attacked, places a leech on the attacker and reflects 50% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker and increase the amount of damage reflected by 20% uh, from reflect damage place, a bus placed by this ally. Very strong passive, very cool ally protector, and just an incredibly high, incredible Hydra champion as well. All right, guys, let's take a look at the list here. And again, I do want to give a shout out here to Raid uh, Raid Shadow Pro .gg. I do have an, my company, I should say, has an affiliation with this website. It's not I'm not get, like getting paid or anything like that from it, but uh, I just want to kind of throw that out there. Also, chosen uh, Chofly in his team are responsible for a lot of this. And I will say they they have like a whole. Uh, uh, explanation on how they rank these champions whether you agree or disagree with this sort of a explanation on how they value and weigh uh you know where champions good their versatility their book value into the overall rankings i just like that they have one they have something you know anyway these are the champions we just spoke about right let's 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 criticize for a little bit guys duchess krisk akrezia lydia siffy cardio yumeko mithrala uh, Brogni. That's the top 10 here. Sorry that I'm, I'm covering Mithrala and Brogni. Anybody here you guys would not put in your top 10? I guess for me, if, if it was going to be anybody, it might just be Brogni, you know? But he's number 10, so I'm not going to, like, quibble over that. I'd probably put Kaimar a little bit over uh, Brogni. Uh, but after that, let's see who they have. Again, Kaimar, Elva, Theodore, Mashal, Valkyrie, Ninja, Nekmo, Nutcracker, Arbiter, Nishak, Helicath, Lady Kimmy. So here, I would actually put Theodore a little bit down, a little bit down. Mashald maybe a little bit down. Elva maybe a tiny bit down on my personal rankings. Because you got to put people down if you're going to be moving them up, right? It's easy to say everybody belongs in the top 30, right? You got you to actually decide who's going to get out, right? So we got Ninja... I, Hard to put him anywhere down, more down, right? So let's just stay there. Uh, Nekmo, we have uh, Nutcracker. I don't have any problems with these champions. Arbiter, I might move a little bit down. I would keep Nishak where he is, Helicath where he is, Lady Kimmy where he is, Leo, Rio, uh, keeping those two as well. Deke, I'm moving down, man. I love Deke. I love Deke. But I just think there's some epics who are a little bit better than him and some legendaries, frankly, right? Godseeker, I'm staying. Godseeker stays. Man Eater, I'm moving him a little bit down. Uh, because now there's so many options for unkillable teams. A lot of people just stick with Man Eater because that's who they had first, but even for like Iron Twins, gonna need a block damage champion, especially when Helicath came out, Demitha, other champions like that. Just because back in the day, there was only Man Eater, you know, and Roshkar, there was uh, Warcaster, there was only a few, Sir Nick. Uh, but now there's, you know, there's more, uh, is what I'm saying. Royal Guard, move them a little bit down, a little bit down. Love Royal Guard, by the way, right? Uh, Seer, I'd move her a little bit down. Uh, even though, again, lover, but there's other ways to speed farm in this game now, especially when they're introducing new amazing champions and nukers all the time. And then we have Necra and Snick Track. Snick Track, I might move a little bit down. I actually really love Snick Track, but I might, and I don't have him, so I want to be clear on that one. He's the only champion I do not have in this top 30. Actually, take that back. There's three I don't have Nutcracker and Acrisia. Womp womp. That new fragment summoned Pythion, guys. She is amazing. I would put her in the top 30, okay? Uh, now let's talk about, okay, so I've offended half of you guys by taking a bunch of champions out. Who would I put in instead, okay? Uh, Geo. To me, Geo and Godseeker are the best two epics in the game. Uh, Geo for, I guess, offense and Godseeker for defense, you know? Uh, Stagnite. I would not put in, Stagnite is amazing, just like Duck the Pierce, just like, uh, you know, uh, what's a Deacon, even though they're quite different as well. Uh, Martyr, I would not put in top uh, 30. Dark Kale, I might be, Dark Kale and Ugo, I would put both these champions, whew, 
I love both these champions, but I'm not sure. Let's just see if there's other candidates who definitely belong in there. Uh, Tawana Rock, I would actually put Tawana Rock top 30. I'm a massive fan. Increased speed, the cleanse, the continuous heals, increased defense. Uh, Ryan, I would not put that high. Duck, I would not put that high. Michinaki, I'm big on. Uh, no problem with him being the top like 40 or so. Warlord, to me, definitely goes into the top uh, 30. So he would be replacing somebody. Archmage Helmet, uh, not top 30, but very good epic. Claude Beast Feeder, way too high in my opinion. Uh, good champion, don't get me wrong, but not better than like Candyman, Rhonda, and stuff like that. Herndig, uh, Venus. Uh, Staltus Dragonbane, the hardest hitting defensive nuker in the game. I wouldn't put him this high though. I put him, you know, maybe top 50. Duh. Which he is, I guess, uh, technically, right? <laughs> Venus, I'm a massive fan. Uh, I don't I have any problems with her being, you know, close. But who am I? Urigrim, I'm not putting in top 30. Herndig, I'm not putting in top 30. Ronda, probably not top 30 because I haven't even seen my man UDK, man. Ultimate Death Knight and Mighty Uko, I would actually put top 30, those two champions, okay? So Candyman, I would put top 30. So we've got Kanderfawn, we've got Mighty Uko added, we've got Warlord added, Tawana Rock added, okay, Geomancer added. So we've already picked like five champions. Uh, Magnar, Farker in the Fat, Demitha, Allure, Wither, Tomb Lord. I already said Mighty Uko. And of course, I'm biased just as anybody else is, right? I think Coldheart is the best uh, rare champion in the game. I just wouldn't put her top 30 overall. Ramen 2, Raglan, Cernix, Grank, Bad El Kazar. Bad L, Sissia, massive fans of those champions. Calvalax, massive fan, knocked the, the Paralyzer. Look at UDK all the way down here, man. All the way down here. I would put him up there. Caden is super high on this uh, tier list. I have to say, the lower I go, the more disagreements I can kind of find here personally, but that's the beauty of this game, right? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, so, you know, we got Trunda down here. Uh, but, you know, come on. Trunda is lower than the, you know, Magnar? I love Magnar. Maybe they're taking into account the rarity and they're holding it against them because they're harder to book and harder to upgrade, you know? Anyway, guys, I think we can probably wrap there. I think I've been critical enough. I do love this website, though. I love rankings. You know, you can probably tell from the channel, guys. But let me know. Let me know. Do you agree with the top of this tier list? And do you agree and disagree with the champions that I kind of would have moved around towards the end of this video? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.